<laughs> Research time. <laughs> Let's oh, leave. Oh, are we done questioning them? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you guys How wait. Do you to know? How did you know all of it? For how I'm long a, have, has he been working for her? <laughs> I'm a doctor, he says. Oh, me too. Nice to meet you. Ah! Uh, you, sir, are a shame to the profession. <laughs> 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 Please, I beg you, just give me a pocket full of gold and I'll be on my way. Hmm. What's that? Did you hear that? God. All right, yeah, we know when we're done with this piece. <laughs> just leave them here in a drugged up state. The doctor's not drugged up yet. Or is <laughs> not he? Yet. Well, I don't know. Daniel Zool's been rather liberal with the uh, medicine. No, I just, uh, I'd not give any to him. And uh, the other guy got one dose because he got cured from the other one. Right. So you guys are skedaddling? Out um, the back door's it's window. Probably, it's probably safer to these two if we lure them away. So we're kind of doing it in a nice, nice thing. I guess. Uh, well, they might still go in there and kill them anyway, but who knows? No problem. Uh, everybody, give me a stealth roll uh, versus uh, uh, Kinley. Pretty much just roll low. The R two uh, seventy or less, I believe, is your number. If one person fails it, then all the hell in the etc. Yeah. Looks like everybody else is ninja. Um. He's got a good line of. Oh, yeah, do that. Take this, get rid of whatever you don't want. Yeah, okay. You guys uh, ninja out of there. Ninja. Oh, we take the trip tax with us, by the way. Okay. It, it's just a cheap trip tax thing, so you can see what a trip tax looks like. It's, this oh. one has nothing to do with anything other than, like, this is what a trip tax is. Okay. okay. Still take it. <laughs> Bastards. All right. You guys, where do you wish to uh, uh, head off to? Um, well, do we want to do research on this? Madame Balab? We certainly do. Whatever the fuck her name is. <laughs> Bavarian. Yeah, let's go to the lobby. <coughs> right. They, they they don't have much in the way of books and shit here yet. I mean, it's mostly like uh, romance novels and stuff. They don't yeah. really have a huge amount of books in this old west town yet. Um, if we're in a area where we can talk freely, I'm sure you guys are at uh, a small lending library where you have to be a member and it's expensive. I, you guys are dressed fairly well, although it looks like you guys all need some minor repairs on your clothes from all the hell you've been going through. But yeah, you're in a place you can talk freely. Um, I don't know very much about what those things were, but we should find out. That's probably not going to be in this library, though. Do you guys have any ideas about what nature the straw people are? I'll think about my weird bedtime stories that my dad would tell me in the forest. When no, nope. uh, they never talked about stick people. <laughs> when I normally refer to elf stuff, it normally do refer to necromancy because that's what elves generally use but it's not the only thing they use and he's already said that that's not the case but that it's something worse yeah something with a white face i don't know what could be anything the main, main thing here is not to rush to the um oh yeah definitely not to rush to the theater we need to go and get a plan before going in 
Well, the, the truly disturbing thing for all of you guys is that uh, you didn't see them. Or if you okay. did see them, your consciousness just did not register them. Well, the door was closed. No, I meant before that, dude. Before that. Remember oh. when you had to get somebody to give you an assistant reroll to fail your oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm guessing it's uh, along the same lines as the uh, Doctor Who guys that fucking... Silence! Because <laughs> <laughs> I think they're yeah. called the Silence. Yeah, that was my joke. This one. I, I give you a card for it. It was a good one. Um, so who can do that? Who can do something like that? And he says, beware of the eyes. And she's a performer, so potentially some sort of mesmer issue. I know who can do that, says your ah. amulet. Hey, little buddy. <laughs> Tell me more. It's an SCD spell, but mobile. I don't know what SCP means. Somebody else's problem. <laughs> I'm serious. Silence. <laughs> Best wow. information where it tells you everything and nothing all at the same time. When you come back to it and you're like, oh, yeah, that was. <laughs> Kim looks like right. What? So they're invisible then? Invisibility spell? Uh, oh no, there's no invisibility in this campaign that Logan's aware of. No. It's more like a mesmer ability. Like we're forgetting what we see. Yeah. Or we just don't. They're hard to focus on type thing. Hmm. And why, says the amulet, because they are somebody else's problem. <laughs> it's that kind of thing where you've got to try and look out the corner of your eyes mm. when you send something's there. Or do you like a mirror or something? Or just buckets of sawdust or glitter. Oh, that could work. <laughs> glitter is. Fabulous! Yeah, glare would be better. I notice I'm holding up a pink topped uh, vape thing. I'm like, fabulous! <laughs> yeah, so if we were to potentially confront them at some point, we need some way to see them. Oh, you were close to being able to see them, Freddy. So close, but then at the end, you chickened out, Freddy. Which yeah. just makes it better. I'm hoping that if things go to plan, <coughs> we don't have to. Uh, I hope so too. I'm hoping there's a way we can kind of shut this down without just running it. Well, not only do we need to shut it down, but we need to find Arthur as well. Yeah, well, so he's been taken, I'm guessing, possibly to her place, like if it's a theatre or whatever. Mm. Um, For some reason. So we need to find out about her. How do we find out about her in a place like this? Why don't we go to the oncology and ask around at the theatre? Someone might know about her there. Just well, say, you're I, like a budding theatre performer. You're trying to like... Yeah. The only problem is I don't, I don't know. know if that's going to tip. I mean, we're, we're obviously being surveilled, so... Um, I think approaching the theatre at any point, we're going to be mm. just going to know that we're coming, um, unless we go super ninja. Um, well, you guys have proven that you are all ninjas. That's true. I'd rather just try and find out as much as we can without going to the theatre, because I'm thinking that's going to be end game, if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, so 
Who well, keep knows? in mind, you've only got an hour and 45 minutes real time to make it work. So good uh -huh. luck. Because Sheila is also on limited time. I know Matt's on limited time. And I know Freddie'd love nothing better than fighting the main bad guy on his own. <laughs> It'd be the first main bad guy fight where both parties are one where the main bad guy is actually the one chasing down the PC and going, <laughs> going back and die. Well, we can go back to the uh, club, the other clubhouse, uh, where Mr. Summers lived, and ask the lawyer if he knows anything about Madame Byron. Has he heard any rumors about her? Hey, you're pretty sure he's told you everything he knows. Yeah, I think if he'd known that they were connected, he would have mentioned it. Um, I'm kind of thinking maybe trying to ask around the archaeology, but. Well, there's this Frederick Milton guy. Yeah, that's what I was looking at, too. That's connected to the theater. Apparently, it's his her escort. Oh, what about the, um, we never looked up the best friend, either. Oh, yeah. What's yeah. well, kind of person they might, uh, might be? Peter Blaylock. Yeah, Peter Blaylock, yeah. Hmm. That's, that's that should be easy to find. Yeah, yeah let's let's go find him. Cut to Peter Blaylock's home. He lives in a <laughs> well-to-do. So what? I thought you were gonna say Peter Blaylock's tombstone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shit. Awkward. Uh, no problem. Uh, this is one of those upper-class homes. A uh, maid, a sheep-headed maid, answers the door. Empathy rolls. Right. I, Dana, you become numb to everything around you, and good thing, too. Uh, right. Uh, Kinley, she's looking at you oddly. Oh, and she's frightened. Uh, Freddie, she's looking at you oddly, or she's looking at Kinley oddly. She's frightened, and she's wondering what all that white powder on Kinley's face is. Hey, Kinley, you might want to wipe off that left of a donut you have on your face. <laughs> because there's nothing better than a good cocaine habit before battle. <laughs> I help you? Uh, is Mr. Blaylock home? She looks startled as though this should be like da da da, but she goes. Huh. Please come in. Uh, let me take you to the uh, sitting room, and I will see what is available. Okay. She takes you to the uh, sitting room, and eventually a horse-headed lady comes in. Um, she's a bit drunk. Uh, give me a small roll. God damn. <laughs> hmm. uh, right. Kinley, it's kind of a cloying odor. It's familiar to you. It smells like that stuff you smelled on the straw before that you found. Yeah. Uh, and she goes, oh, Peter's friends have come to visit then, have they? Hmm. I plan to take Peter to Genovia for the air. He's, he's a bit unwell. He's is being attended to the family doctor right now. Get drinks? Can I offer you drinks? Whiskey. Oh, I, she pours you a large gin and tops off her own. Here you are, she says. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he just shrugs and drinks. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, what, happened? what happened to Peter? Oh. Hey, he'll be well soon. He's had a little bit of a boo-boo. Nothing to worry about. May Would you like to see him? him? Yes, please. Oh, all right. She summons a uh, haggard-looking, moose-headed servant uh, who is going to take you to see him. 
you notice anytime he gets near a door, he looks over uh, he looks over his shoulder and then goes through the door and then back because he's got the loose arms. Anyway, you guys get taken to a sitting room where a horse-headed Peter Blaylock is pop, propped up in a bath chair, swathed in black with his entire head, covered in bandages, including his eyes and mouth. The linen's fresh, apart from ugly rust-brown stain that forms a circular impression roughly where his mouth should be. Near at hand is a pencil and several small pieces of paper. The moose-headed butler stays in the room. There's an old deer-headed doctor with some alcohol near at hand who also looks a bit tipsy. I'm afraid, says the doctor, you haven't come into good time to see Master Blaylock. What happened to him? It's delicate. Are you a mm -hmm. physician? I am. I stomp uh, on Freddy's foot. <laughs> giving her a card for stomping on your foot. And he goes, uh, right this way, young man. Aren't you a bit young of an Australian to be a physician, he says, taking uh, Dana Zool aside. No, just short. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, he says. Have a drink. <laughs> he says, I'm afraid he, by right, should be dead already. Much of his facial tissue and other parts of his flesh are gone, harried away. Where was Please. he found? How long has it been since his injury? Not long. I think he was near the theater district when he was found. <laughs> I ask you to make sure that you and your companions are delicate when questioning and do not excite him. Otherwise, we'll have to end it and you'll have to leave. Do you understand? Yes. I glare at the other two. You know that you're going to be kicked out of here within the next 30 seconds, so you're thinking you've got to fucking make it quick. He nods to you and takes you back over. He can't speak, he can write, on, but not well. He's in dreadful agony, I'm afraid. I've given him some medicine. Uh, I'm not sure if I should increase his morphine or not. Doesn't seem to help much. Doesn't seem to help much at all. And it should, he drinks more of his alcohol. Uh, would you like another drink, sir? He says to Kinley. Yes. He switches glasses with you. Thank you. He drinks. <laughs> You've got a little, little bit uh, here, sir. Yeah, I'm saving for later. Ah, very good. <laughs> um, Peter Blaylock is uh, apparently in the chair. I approach, uh, you know, uh, non non threatening. I'm not stomping or <laughs> it's not yeah. like I'm like rushing him or anything. You're pretty sure the other two will cover for you and do all those things. <laughs> Peter, we're here to stop the person who did this to you. I'm going yeah. to hand you the your pencil and your paper. Tell us what happened. He scrawls several notes, but all he can do is scrawl badly, half-formed single words, just a few. He scrawls them out for you. They are those. Huh. Anybody care to read those for the studio audience who's wondering what in the fuck sure. he scrolled? Uh, it's pain, sin, she with a two e's, hell, and then a r u r. So I think it's going to be Arthur, hell Arthur or something. B a y b. So maybe baby, and straw. It's S t a w. Uh -huh. 
goes out the other. I think it's true. Yeah, yes. Apparently, the R has been reserved for the rating of this episode. So, what do you guys wish to do now? Where Where's Arthur? We want to help him. Hmm. Bag of lion a shovel like a coming out. <laughs> He scrawls those cryptic words. He is in considerable pain. Even the mere act of scrawling something with his undamaged hand is just causing him pain. I didn't know what to can in with, but if we get the others out of the room, you can do your thing and help him. Uh, possibly. You're thinking this might fall under the magically wounded thing. You're not sure. Uh, okay. He's at her house. He's at the madam's house. The faintest of nods. Um, do you know anything about a trip text? We understand this could be the key. Uh, no. <laughs> how can we tell when her straw people are near? Or how can we see them? Fair enough, pain. <laughs> That's a good indicator. It might be. Why did they attack you? Oh, I mean, the doctor was injured when we first got there. So it might be why, how he could see them. Love. Oh. Did you love Arthur? Ah, you were trying to help him. I see. Help, help, help us right here, help us up. And that's why they attacked him. Hmm. I think you should be going now, says the drunken deer headed doctor. He needs to rest. I'm sorry this happened to you, Peter. Alex, if you try to help a person with your special skills, you learned from afar, um, is there negative consequences or it just doesn't heal them? It won't do anything if it's magical based, I guess, because it's just physical. And nothing, says the uh, doctor, that can help him now other than perhaps time. 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 Time and tide, gentlemen. Good day. Good day. Let's keep moving. You guys go from this place to a different place? Um. I think we should not be staying in any single place very long. Good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. So there is a baby. What? Is it baby or is it... Maybe. Oh. Maybe it's baby. Or I is it trying to be baby. her name, which starts with baby? Her name is Byron. Yeah. Where to? Um, 
You guys are walking down the street. It looks like it's uh, getting into uh, late afternoon now. Mm. You walk along the avenue. <laughs> rolling do, 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 do. Um. Hey, look. There's a not super busy cafe. Let's slip into there. You guys slip into the cafe like a milk lubricated. No. Anyway, uh, you guys <laughs> head into the cafe, order up some stuff. Uh, it comes down. It's two bits for all of you to have a, a nice cup of tea and some uh, cakes and such. Two, two bits. That's right. Uh, that would be uh, one fortieth of a gold piece. Can I get ten for that? Sure. All right. Now he gives you a uh, nineteen uh, uh, beastkin bucks and two more bits, so that way you can have another round of uh, cakes and tea if you desire. I I'll just get another round of cake. You have nineteen beastkin bucks and a big okay. bag of gold left. Watching Alex Kinley's massive hands trying to manipulate the super delicate teacup is just precious. Can't stand these. I'm uh, wondering if um, her escort is a potential way in. But finding him will be the tricky bit. It shows the uh, wind blowing alone tumbleweed across the door. Are there any other leads we need to go down? <coughs> Various posh people sitting around here drinking tea and eating crumpets and talking about having tea with the queen on the veranda and stuff like that. Wouldn't that be lovely? Um, so do we think that the painting was a serious thing or he seemed pretty sketchy? The painting? Which one? The, I look around, three part painting? Oh. Well. I look at the magic expert. It was better, says one lady to another, when Princess Danny ruled the lands. You knew where you stood then. Oh, I agree. You see a bit of a blush on Kinley. You're not sure why exactly. <laughs> Always comes back to home. Right. She was an actual good ruler. We have so few of them. And now with the kingdom of Westmaid, we shouldn't talk about that. Never can tell who's listening to that sort of talk. Well, we know where Arthur is probably. Yeah. It's just this trip that Whatever happened to Princess Danny anyway? Well, word is that she was seduced by a rogue, a scallion. Oh. I thought that was a different. Is it both? What? I thought you did the human one. Oh, uh, the animal one. <laughs> he looks around like. <laughs> okay, um. <laughs> Yeah, it seemed like a su a surprise visit would be in store. It would just be if there's a MacGuffin to keep our eye out, but that would probably be in there as well. A MacGuffin? <laughs> what is a MacGuffin? I've never heard that. <laughs> it is. A waiter passing by goes, ooh, that's a new Scottish place, MacGuffins. It's down the road. I've heard of it. Um, yeah, it, I, well, so she's at the theater and she she's keeping hold of him. He'll be at the theater. And I'm guessing if there is a painting that portrays how to destroy her, 
she'll probably keep it hidden at the theatre. So I, I don't know. I suppose breaking into it rather than just ninjaing in and finding out what we can, maybe in the middle of the night. I don't know. I think we're probably already marked. So, although you're very good at disguises, it's true. It'd we be don't... hard to disguise ourselves as Beast again, though. Yeah. And we don't even know enough about the politics of how to fake it. Well, or, or we well, could, or the other thing is we try and be sneaky and we go and take a show because it is a theater. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. You have a really good disguise kit, like a futuristic one, you know, like modern day or something. Uh, disguising yourself as three different furries and stuff is very possible. I mean, it might be a real test of your disguise artistry, though, Kenley. And plus, to get the uh, uh, mouths to move and stuff would be trickier. Hello, I am a horse person. <laughs> or whatever. Um. Do we think Opera House or do we think House? I thought it was her home that. Yeah, Oz is at home. Pushed to us. Well, do we even know where she lives? Address, I mean. We don't. As we know, I, bet, I bet it's find outable. Yeah, we need to find out about her. So if we don't, we can't research at a library about what do we do? Um, Ask people on the streets. There's got to be. Is there like a newspaper for this area? Oh, God, yeah. yes. A local theater critic? The local people. Yes, there, there's a newspaper. Oh, that's a terrible local newspaper. Uh, like, uh, you want to just get one of the broadsheets, or do you want to go to the newspaper offices? Well, I was ideally thinking we would go to the office and go have a little chat down with the person who's been probably researching a new popular star, I imagine. Okay. Yeah, I suppose it is. Cool. You guys head down there, and uh, they don't really have, they don't allow people into their newspaper or archives and stuff. They, uh, but you do get to talk to a lady named Neva Cooper. She's a reporter for the newspaper. She's like, hi, how can I help? We've got a hot scoop for the theater critics ears only. Which theater? The Orpheum. She re represses a snicker. She goes, <laughs> I doubt that there's any hot scoop there. That's kind of a down on its heels type of theater. Then uh, wait, is, all this the more, here. <laughs> is this more gossip about the Duchess of Mouth? Is that the show that was running last month? That's right. Mm. Oh, there was so, so much there. Hmm? Which means so much. Have you got any information you could share on this? What do I get out of it? You get what I've got. <laughs> How do I know what you've got is any good? I've got a lot. We got a we got a lot lot. How do we know what you've got is good? I'm guessing I'm we a, just have to have a I'm a star reporter, she says. <laughs> so are we. No, you're not. Yeah. What's your name? Alex Kinley. Huh. She rolls her current events. If she's a good reporter, she's a good reporter. <laughs> Aren't you the one who had an affair with Princess Danny? I told you we've got a big scoop. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You uh, give me a little bit of the dish on that. I'll tell you everything I know about that show. Oh, sure. You start. Let's she go says, into your office. Start. Are we still looking in a, in a bullpen? <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's our reporters and stuff. She goes, dish. I embellish she, it. I embellish the shit out of it. Do you have any storytelling skills? Of course I do. Give me a roll. Lower is better, as always. Uh, a Princess Danny tell-all. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Might want to. And I make myself sound extra heroic in it. Uh, sorry, I just got to find it. Everybody's great. Right. Skill plus card. Set the record straight. Oh, I did. You want to skill 10, Matt? Ooh. Uh, yeah, go on it. All right, just trade me something. Give you a lucky, lucky day. Ooh. <laughs> it's a lucky day. Plus 10. For a 34 under. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no problem. Uh, yeah, she she fucking laps this up. Uh, That's she, a hop, by the way. She's like, what a scoop. Stay here a minute. She rushes off. Yells, stop the presses. And you're <laughs> Shit. Stop saying that, yells the editor. And eventually she comes back after being uh, uh, yelled at for a while. And she goes, okay, Duchess of Mouth. Uh, it was fairly well-funded, uh, well-reviewed. Uh, it's the usual intrigue of, uh, in, or mix of intrigue and slaughter. Uh, and uh, despite being a success uh, in other theaters, when it got to uh, the Orpheum, it was troubled, produ- troubled from the start. Uh, its producer and principal financial backer was an uh, infamous rake and womanizer. Her eyes slide to Kinley and then back to uh, you guys, uh, named Frederick Milton, whose fiery temper and dubious coterie of hangers on frequently caused trouble. Shortly after the opening night, though, a visually striking woman began to attend the play almost every night. She's an aristocrat called Madame Byrigan, and she swiftly became the center of decadent parties held at the theater and elsewhere into which men and women seemed to be drawn in as if by a whirlpool, Milton not least among them. As time went by, several members of the cast and crew seemed to be or soon became subject to mysterious accidents, and in two cases, the unfortunates disappeared without a trace. Matters came to a head thereafter, about three weeks earlier than now, when Frederick Milton committed suicide and the production was abruptly abandoned by the theater's owners as guard involvement and possible forced closure loomed. One of Milton's former conquests, a young former actress named Lily Boyer, was also, who also appeared in a minor role in the play. Lily was one of the two disappearances directly connected to the cast. Nearly two weeks ago, she was found wandering the streets with her clothes in disarray and her right hand mutilated. The other vanished player, a young actor named Edgar Dane, remains missing, she says. Still in a state of profound shock and little memory of what has befallen her and with nowhere to go other than either the sanatorium or the streets, the Ophrium stage manager, uh, whose name is Augustus Phelps, has taken pity on Lily and given her a job helping out behind the scenes, sweeping up and assisting as best she can. They, they're taking care of her, you know, because they're, they're nice people, even though they are theater people. Um, yeah. Kind of just copy paste all of it. <laughs> that was a lot of information. Okay, so maybe she's not going to be at the theater and we can go to the theater to find out information. Mm-hmm. We hope. Thank you. Mm-hmm. But it was in the telling that it was sexier. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, it was a lot of information. Oh, I've got it all. I don't know what you guys are worried about. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you do it then? Great, we don't need to take notes. <laughs> are, you sh- are you sure it's the Duchess of Mouth? Not the Duchess Mouthy. of Milf? That would have been better. <laughs> I'm going to change the title for the feature runnings. <laughs> <laughs> If it wouldn't give too much away, I'd almost have to say that should be the name for the uh, podcast. Mm, you can't use no. What? Really? Uh, I, I don't think YouTube would even notice that one. If it's not capitalized. 
Right, right. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. So probably to go talk to Lily Foyer. Foyer. Uh, well, yeah, I think maybe go and speak to um, Augustus first. He's a stage manager and he will probably, as long as we're nice to him, he'll probably gain, give us access to her. Can I come? Says Neva Cooper, ace reporter. Uh, probably best if you don't. We will relay back our information. Ooh. Do you promise? I promise. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? She says, if you don't, then perhaps there's other things we could oh, talk sorry. about. I need to put my wood. Oh, yes. <laughs> I just start the door. Family. We uh, should stay in one place. Let's keep moving. Kinley's starting to do something with his eyebrows that is either two caterpillars mating or seductive. <laughs> I need to go and put my laundry in is that dryer. your come on? That's what you're <laughs> that, telling her? That's not oh, yeah. my, that's a man not that does anyway. laundry? That sounds like a huge come on. <laughs> oh, oh my god. All right. I have faith in us. I'm going to drop the personal escape card. Mm -hmm. Freddie's like, no. <laughs> I'll be back. You've started a massive escape. Logan, did you write that? Write that physically, right? No. No. Because the English is really good. Like the grammar, I mean. The grammar is good? I enjoy reading it, like, I don't know. No, um, I tend to go in bullet points more. A lot of the people who write mod are like, um, a lot of the people who write mods are like uh, kind of quasi authors. Some are, most of them are really, really horrible, but there's a few good ones out there. Yeah, bullet points. Both bullet points are better with, uh, especially with the kind of players I've got because they may just wander off on a tangent or want to mess around in something else. Yeah. What's that? So. <laughs> or go drinking or whatever, you know. What? I was talking about bullet points versus like uh, mods that I write. Yeah. I, I tend to write in more bullet points and a lot of if then things. Too many of right. them. Do we want to go and um, see if we can find uh, this Augustus stage manager guy? Yeah. Okay. Let's go in in disguise. Let's, um, let's go get cleaned up first. Yes. Before we go into the oncology. Where would you and like then... to go to get cleaned up? Do well, I'm going to have to do it. Unless we don't have a room or something that was saying. Well, in, you, for two of you, going into the embassy and getting cleaned up would be super duper easy. For the other one, he has a bomb shelter with uh, a table, a couple of chairs, disturbing yeah. imagery on the wall, and that's about it. Bring me, bring me some spare clothes and a bucket of water and soap. What? Can do. I'll try it. Try it with you. I'm not allowed in the embassy. Oh. You've been setting fires and stuff again. <laughs> no, I've been I've been getting <laughs> blamed for things which weren't my fault. Which weren't my fault. That's what they all say. <laughs> Got two. I went in the bunker. Yeah. You guys get cleaned up 
Uh, when you get to the embassy, everybody give me six cents, danger sense rolls. Yay. By a quarter. Dang. Oh, yeah. I forgot that they knew we were at the embassy. They've reacquired us. Fuck, says Kenley. Everybody else goes, I feel evil. Yeah. Now, I would like to point out that the embassy grounds are rather extensive, and they do have more than one gate. So you could go out of a different gate if you want to yeah. throw them, or if you really wanted to throw them, you could get some of the guards to help boost you over the wall. Or if you're Alex Kinley, you just uh, you could uh, uh, have you two go over the wall and then go, oh no, oh no, oh no, and then the wall would be shattered, and he'd come through and say. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, because <laughs> he's yeah. strong enough to literally Kool Aid man his way through a, a I, wall. I pop. don't think Pete would be too happy there if I rammed one of his walls down. Probably not. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, we'll, just go, we'll just go out a different gate. Oh. oh. <laughs> Following Freddy. Right. Is in the cloud. Oh, Freddy's not there, so we can't face oh, yeah. <laughs> No problem. Uh, you, well, yeah, after getting cleaned up, everybody give me a stealth roll at plus uh, 20%. As you're going out a different gate, they are trying to reacquire targeting. You are far too fiendish for the likes of them. I still make it. <laughs> yeah, plus 20 is definitely better. Oh, yeah. So uh, you guys head over to the theater. It's definitely kind of a down on its heels type place, but it's a theater for the masses and whatnot. You go on in and you quickly uh, locate the uh, guy you come to see because he is the production dude. He uh, helps or he helps run shit here. And one of the interesting things you do notice on several of the painted backdrops that they were using for the the uh, show that they were running up until fairly recently. They're working on a new show right now with rehearsals and shit because the show must go on. The show must go on. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do know some of the backgrounds are like disturbing painted uh, uh, curtain backdrops and stuff. Whoever painted these had a lot of weird shit going on as you're thinking. It, it, it's almost the woman with no name levels of uh, disturbing. That's what I was thinking. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> We're like, and the sudden reveal of who Madam is? <laughs> oh. That's oh, also um, Yeah, the, the guy comes up and he goes, oh, what do you want? I've, I've got just a couple minutes. He looks at you like a put him down. He goes, are you here to make a contribution to the theater? In a way. In what way? Uh, we need some information that could help end up helping the theater. Talk fast. I got a little time. Uh, we understand you have a certain aide backstage who was part of the um, the tragic tragic accident that happened while you had a certain show going on. Yes. Uh, is there any time? You're talking about Lily, aren't you? Is it Lily? Just say Lily if you're talking about Lily. Lily. I don't have time for these weird mind yeah, Lily. Can we speak to Lily, yeah. please? Yeah, all right. I'm going to be present, though, when you do. And if you talk violent to her or rough her up or anything, you'll have me to deal with. It looks no, gently up and down. And my friends. <laughs> he brings her out, although she was a very pretty young lemur-headed woman. She's been reduced to a hollow, empty shell. The spark of life has been snuffed out. She is pale and haunted, yet somewhat lucid. It looks as though she's blind in her left eye as it's staring and immobile. She's missing two fingers from her right hand. Yeah. Lily, hi. Um, I know you've probably gone over this many times before, and um, I know it's a sensitive subject, but we were just wondering if you could relate you any, information, mm -hmm. any information that you can about the incident. What? Incident? What? I look at the female companion in our party. Hmm? 
I uh, the stage step. manager puts his hands on his hips and goes, mm. I step towards her. Lily, tell us about how you were hurt. We want to stop them. No, I can't remember. I don't want to remember. There are others. We need to save Edgar. Who's Edgar? He's another actor. He's gone missing. Oh, Edgar's gone. Oh, gone. Where were you? No, I, you can't. I won't. You can't make me remember. Give me a psychoanalysis <laughs> role to make her remember. I was going to say, well, they're over. Let's try. <laughs> I actually uh, know how to do that. Oh, God damn. Oh. Wow. Wow. Uh, I'll tell you what's the Oh. Yeah. Wow. Wow. All right. We'll try her again. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you reach into her brain and begin tinkering around, and she recalls. There's a fine house on the strand where something something crawled. I was there with others from the production. From there, however, her memories twist into an obscene nightmarish tangle that she cannot unravel. The next thing she can remember is waking up several days later in her own bed at her lodgings, blind in one eye, missing two fingers from her right hand. She confides in you about the gnawing dread. I will be drawn back against my will to return to the house on the strand. In fact, I'm still there now, trapped forever, and this is but a dream. I'll find myself back there, and if you're not careful, you'll be with me. Trapped like a fly in amber. And that's about all she's got. Good enough, done. Great, back to sweeping, Lily, good girl. Sweeping, she says. <laughs> She's not doing too well. Anything else I can help you with? We're selling these uh, from the last show. Uh, we won't be running that show again, not after all the accidents. Some people say it was cursed. I don't. I say you just have to not whistle when you're on stage. Do, do you have any input into uh, these situations that you might help? No, I don't. But if you find whoever hurt Lily, give him what for for me. Gotcha. She's a good girl. Does Madame Bragan still frequent the theater? Sometimes. Hangs out with a bunch of toffs. Highfalutin society types. Word is she'll be coming to a show in two days. It's our grand opening. Something about me tells me that she's not, not any good. Something in me tells me to run whenever I see her, but I smile and nod. And she pays her tickets and handsomely at that, so I can't keep her out. And she brings a whole bunch of other people, and it's always different people every time I've seen her. Sometimes the same, but it's mostly different. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what her game is, and I don't know what your game is either. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, thank you. You've been very helpful. We're just well. trying to help Lily and those like her. If you want to buy any of these backdrops, let me know. They're, they're the only ones we've got left from uh, Maxwell. Maxwell? Bart Maxwell. Bartholomew Wax Maxwell. He's not just our, noted artist of the macabre. And his work has been featured in the Royal Society. And he's created some very disturbing curtain backdrops for the play. He was an intense brooding bastard, but uh, charming when he wished to be. Hasn't been seen or heard of since the play closed. Do you happen to know his address by any chance? I'll get it for you. He storms off. I'll look at the um, at the curtains, see if there's any straw people or Medusa. No, <laughs> no there isn't. It's very gothic looking, but yeah, no straw people. Should we ask him uh, when it comes back? or the address of Madame Byron, if he knows it. Mm. Well, it's not going to be the house on the... On the strand. On the strand. 
Yeah, but where is that? Do we know of such a place that we are now we're now acclimatized to the city? Yes. Oh, that way then. Huh? Right. Theater manager Storm is back. And he hands you the address. There you go. Very good. Good day. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. It's your address. What? <laughs> I flee. <laughs> I flee myself. Right. Let's try out this address. Yes. Stealthily. Which address are you talking about? The house on the, the strand artist. or the artist? Ooh. Right. You guys uh, head over there. It's uh, a, a turret studio. And you go over there to. Oh, you guys are doing it stealthy? Cool. We're trying uh, to lose the trail. trail. Cool. Cool. You also lose Freddy, but eventually he turns up. Looking <laughs> pleased with himself. Uh, outside of the apartment, this occupies a disused uh, farrier's yard. Uh, card for the first person, tell me what a farrier does. Various things, I don't know. <laughs> Shoes, horses? Yeah, let's take a card. And um, this place has an air of neglect around it, and there's a wood, the wooden building has a tumble-down, half-rotted quality. There's a rickety wooden staircase attached to the side of the building. You go up to get to the apartment. The door to the apartment is secured by a rusted metal hasp. You kind of go and bend it back and forth. It's not an actual, it's like a bent nail in there that you kind of twist down to keep the door shut. Even from the doorway, the strong smell of turpentine and something rotten is in evidence within. Freddy looks at the door and begins to worry that he may lose sanity. Oh, then. I give yeah. a little knock and I open it up. No problem. It's locked from your side, so you go and open the door. Nobody answers. The studio itself is a large open plan room with dirty exposed woodwork and a few grimy cracked windows that let in the light. The place, though, in order to keep you from seeing everything at once, there's these fucking soiled white Muslim hangings everywhere. So that way it becomes like it's an open plan, but it's got the creepy big curtain things everywhere. And the room is a chaotic scatter of artist materials, paints, easels, easels canvases, brushes, charcoal, sheets of paper. In other words, it looks like the PCs uh, place with yeah. all the art around. And, Every wall and post is covered in a wild profusion of sketches and paintings. All of them are macabre and gothic. Most of them are half finished or torn or cut up. There's a unkept beds, scraps of food and cutlery, empty gin bottles, candle stubs, playbills, newspaper cutting. There's also a lot of attempts to make a three panel picture laying discarded around. Hmm. Yeah. What's the um, subject matter on the three panel pictures? Uh, some, some, uh, uh, it looks like it changes a little bit, but it, it's trying to make, uh, uh, some dude. Dude? Some yeah, dude. some guy that you don't yet know. Huh. Uh, an elephant headed guy. Could be Vishnu, we don't know. Wonder if that's Milton or something. <laughs> 